Happy New Year and welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 211. Today is the first blank page of a 365-page book. Write a good one. Mongo Wilder. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, Indie Film Hustlers, to a very special New Year's Day edition of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's episode is brought to you by Black Box. Black Box is a new platform and community for filmmakers that transforms them for being workers and people who work for others to being creators and owners of their own content and make passive income from the global marketplace. Black Box currently allows creators to upload stock footage once and get to many agencies and then allows to share their passive income streams with other collaborators. It's quite revolutionary and it's a great work-life hack for filmmakers and video creators. Think of it as a side hustle while you're getting your movies and your projects off the ground. For more information, visit blackbox.global. That's www.blackbox.global and discover how you can start generating extra revenue for yourself. Well, guys, happy new year. It is going to be an insane 2018. 2017 was an exciting year, uh, interesting for many reasons. Uh, But I wanted to kind of go over a little bit of what uh, what we did in Indie Film Hustle in 2017, what we're planning to do in 2018, and uh, and then we'll get to today's insane guest to get you guys off your ass and get your goals met. So first off, guys, 2017 was by far the biggest year ever for Indie Film Hustle. Uh, the podcast has grown so exponentially, I can't even explain. Um, we are now past 1.5 million downloads for a filmmaking podcast that's pretty epic and the blog is getting hit so many times a day Uh, now it's it's insane i had to actually change servers to handle the new traffic load because there's so many new members uh of the tribe coming in daily discovering what uh what i'm trying to do here with indie film hustle and i thank you guys so much for getting the word out and uh and sharing all of what we do uh together as a tribe now this is meg was released In 2017, we were blessed to not only get it released on iTunes, Amazon, and all the main platforms, but we actually sold it to Hulu, which was a monumental uh, achievement because our little movie, it's a little micro-budget film uh, that got sold to Hulu is insane. And we've also sold it overseas uh, to China, to South Africa, and a few other territories uh, as well. And uh, all from this little movie. So again, I can't thank you guys enough for all your support. And I I hope you learned a lot along the way with what we've done with This Is Meg. Now, talking about feature films, I know I've been getting a lot of emails from you guys going, Hey, Alex, when's the next movie? Well, this is what I'm saying. You know, I I usually at the beginning of the year, I always, in this episode, you know, lay out some lofty goals for myself. um, Personally, as an artist and for indie film hustle. Well, what I've decided to do is I'm going to be shooting at minimum two features this year, uh, but possibly three, depending on how, how froggy I feel towards the end of the year. And, uh, and there's some surprises coming up in the next month or two, so as always, stay tuned for that. But I think having at least two to three fe- new feature films this year would be uh, is a good goal, uh, among all the other things that we're going to be doing uh, with Indie Film Hustle. But for me personally, as a director... Those are my goals. Uh, I might have some other jobs come up. Uh, this year, I was lucky enough to shoot that sh- that series for Legendary Pictures, which took about four or five months out of my life. Uh, and that kind of slowed me down from directing any other feature work to the point where I just took the rest of the year off and worked on Indie Film Hustle, as you guys noticed, with all the extra content that was being put up there. And also in 2018, I'm going to be releasing a new podcast. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the name of it is yet, but we're hopefully going to be releasing it in March, April sometime. It all depends on how my schedule works out. But I will be releasing a brand new weekly podcast covering a different topic uh, that will be a part of the Indie Film Hustle podcast network, if you will, uh, if, if that's a thing. But, uh, but yeah, that will be coming out as well because, again, I don't have enough to do. Uh, and today is the first day of the Ask Alex show. 
So the Ask Alex show is on YouTube. Just head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash YouTube and you will get a brand new episode every day for 31 days all throughout January. Do not expect that pace to continue, uh, but it will be just for January. Afterwards, I'll probably put it out once or twice a week depending on uh, how the how the whole series goes in the, in the, in the next month. So go there, check it out, subscribe, uh, and it's basically me talking with you guys, the tribe doing uh, consulting sessions and really just talking about your problems and hopefully helping other tribe members out by listening to us talk about it. So let me know what you think and let me know what if we could do anything better. Please send me emails, messages. Let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see what you guys think about that. And another big thing I'm going to be doing out in February we're going to be releasing is a huge course uh, that I've been working on for over a year now. Uh, the producing indie film producing master course by Suzanne Lyons. Now, if you guys have listened to the podcast, you know Suzanne Lyons. She's been on the show a couple times. Uh, she is a master independent film producer. She's produced so many different films over the course of her career, and she has done multiple workshops and seminars over the course of the last 25, 30 years. And this specific seminar that she uh, she allowed me to record cost about $2,500 to enroll. And I was able to talk her into, like, you got to let me put this up online. This stuff is amazing. It goes through everything uh, that you need to raise money, get money, produce, get all the paperwork stuff taken care of. This is a this is a producer-heavy course. This is all about producing, actually getting the movie made and all the paperwork you need, which we will have there as well. But as part of the course, you'll be able to download Word, doc, Word docs, PDFs, contracts, uh, PPMs, all sorts of different things that you need legal paperwork that she's been able to develop over the course of her career and that all included in this course. So we're finishing it up right now. Hopefully we'll be doing a big massive launch in February. And if you are a filmmaker and you need you want to produce a movie, this course is for you. It's about almost five to six hours long. And uh, has me in there talking a bunch about post-production and workflow and all that kind of stuff as well. So we go through everything. in it. So that's another big thing coming up in 2018 from Indie Film Hustle. Now, today's guest is Eric Thomas. Now, if you guys don't know who Eric Thomas is, Eric Thomas is one of the world's leading motivational speakers. They call him the hip-hop preacher. He goes around, all around the world, preaching and and motivating people to get up off your ass. And I tell you what, when I need motivation, I just go on to YouTube and listen to a bunch of E.T. stuff, man, because E.T.'s uh, motivational words are so powerful, and he comes from such a good place, and he is no joke. He will just rail into you hard, and that's what I love about him. He has a no BS kind of way of of just getting the word out. And I, I kind of try to do the same thing myself, a little bit of tough love, but E.T. is amazing, man. And I want to give a big shout out to Kenneth over on E.T.'s team who reached out to me after, you know, he, he Kenneth is actually a uh, Indie Film Hustle tribe member and he reached out to me and uh, I was so excited that we've been working together to try to get E.T. on the show because I think we all said we need to get E.T. on the show. You know, the tribe needs some E.T. in their life. And uh, and Kenneth was made, able to make it happen. So, Kenneth, thank you again so much for this, man. So, E.T.'s words literally reaches and impacts tens of millions of people around the world and, and around the planet. And he has literally become a global phenomenon. On YouTube, he's got just millions upon millions of downloads. And he's been interviewed by the biggest guys in the world. So, I am humbled and and honored to have him on the show. So, Prepare yourselves to be inspired. I think this is a great way to start 2018. Anytime you need some motivation, come back to this episode because, you know, when I hear it, I've been hearing this episode a bunch of times already and I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm hyped up. I'm going, I'm, I can't wait to get into it again. So without any further ado, please enjoy my conversation with E.T. Eric Thomas. I'd like to welcome to the show E.T. Eric Thomas. I'm so excited to have you on the show, brother. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to the tribe, man. I appreciate it. Super duper excited uh, to be on. You know, I tell people when you use the word tribe, I am very 
particular about who I put in front of my tribe. You know, so the fact that you would give me access to your tribe, uh, it's an honor, man. It's an honor. I mean, I, and I, I've been following you for a while now, man. And when I need motivation, I just turn on an ET video and, and that'll get you, that'll get you riled up. Good five minutes is all you need. It's better than a cup of coffee. That's what I hear. It's better than a cup of coffee in the morning, brother. You just put an ET. That's what I hear. I, I, I don't listen to ET myself, but uh, I've, I've heard that he's a, uh, uh, and, I, and I, I got a funny story, man. I, when, you know, when I do work in the um, physical industry, especially maybe a year ago, and guys would come up to me buff, you know, uh, young ladies come up to me cut. Uh, E.T., man, I listened to your videos. I was like, yo, I need to start listening to some E.T. Because I'm kind of <laughs> chunky over here. You know, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you listening, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So can you tell um, the tribe a little bit about uh, who you are and where you come from for people who don't know you? Yeah, man, I tell people all the time, man, I am a, I'm a failure that didn't give up. You know, I'm a failure that didn't give up. I failed in every aspect of my life. I failed as a son. You know, I failed as a student. I failed myself. I failed as a husband. I failed as a parent. You know, I failed as an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a guy, <laughs> you know, who failed but got back up. My mom got pregnant with me at 17. You know, my biological father, you know, didn't have anything to do with me um, until probably I was 30 years old. I dropped out of high school. I was homeless. Took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. Um, I, I've done a lot of failing, man. You know, I've done a lot of failing. <laughs> but that's the way um, you learn, isn't it? I just, yeah, yeah. I just didn't give up. Now, I'll be honest. I don't even know if I learned a whole lot the first <laughs> twenty some years. You know, um, you know. But I will say this. You know, um, being a kid growing up watching, you know, like football. I was a cowboy fan mm -hmm. when I was younger. You know, uh, and just watching, you know, the Cowboys' pursuit to, you know, the Super Bowl and different teams, the Pistons. Pursuit, you know, um, Isaiah losing to, you know, Larry Bird several times before mm -hmm. they actually won their first one. And I said to myself one day, yo, you like you you like the feeling of winning when you see your team wins. What would it feel like if you won? Mm -hmm. You know, and so then it was at that point I was like, yo, you a high school dropout. Your father's a high school dropout. I often say my grandfather was a high school dropout. The reality is I don't even know my grandfather. You know, I just said right. recently, I was like, oh, you can't, you can't say he's a high school dropout. You don't even know him, you know, but I'm, I'm, I, nobody's called me. No, none of my aunties or uncles called me and told me I was lying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I, I, I must be right about it, you know? Right, so right. Um, for me, man, I've just failed, failed, failed. One day I woke up and was like, yo, I'm just not feeling, failing no more. Like, it just doesn't feel good. It's, it's something about it that's not right, you know? Um, and I just don't want to have to... I don't want to do it another 20 years, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just made up in my mind the fear, the, the, the anxiety of success, the, the pain of change. Like, I'm going through so much pain anyway. I might, as well, I, I might as well go through some of the pains that it requires to be successful. Right, right. And, and without question. And there is a lot of pain that you do need to go through to be successful. There is that grind that we'll, we're going to talk about in a bit. But... Can you tell me what is the biggest challenge you see in people when you speak to them and, 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 and within your ministry and within your, you know, your mission in life? I, I'm going to be honest, man. You know, for me, it's E.T., I know I can do better. You know, I know I want to do better. I just don't know if I want to work as hard as it takes to get there. That, that's pretty honest, of, not of you, but of the people who say that, because most people aren't even that self-aware. I think if you ask me, like, that's what, you know, my wife, we were talking about, you know, hey, changing the diet up, you know, and doing the vegan boy, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, just modifying it. Like, not, you know, I'm not no fanatic, no disrespect to people who, you know, decide to do plant based, but I'm sure. not a guy that just feels like, you know, I got, you know, if I, I just got to do plant, but I knew she needed to change her diet, mm -hmm. you know, but I knew the struggle for my wife was my MS is not that bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's, it's not that bad to give up, you know, uh, macaroni and cheese. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? And, uh, Pop Popeye's chicken. Like, it's bad, but it ain't that bad. Whereas, <laughs> I'm just being honest, when somebody has, you know, uh, a chronic illness and they can't walk or they can't see, right. it, it's like, oh, man, I got I to gotta do whatever I got to do. You know, but for my wife, she's doing very good. 
Mm-hmm. So to do to do well or great, is that sacrifice worth it? And I just really think that when I look at the average person, that's what it is. Like, yo, yeah, I'm not doing bad. I want to do better. But to do better will require, like people say, you get up at three o'clock in the morning. Have you lost your mind? And I look at it the opposite. I look at it as I get up at three o'clock in the morning. I can be a millionaire. I, I can work for myself. I can change my family's just three o'clock in the morning. Are you kidding me? How easy is that? Like that mm-hmm. doesn't require, you, you know, it'd be one thing if somebody said, E.T., you want to be a multimillionaire? You're going to have to be a rocket scientist. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I had no chance at it. You know what I'm saying? It's a wrap. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It's like my family is doomed. There's nothing I can do about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when you're telling me that I could become a multimillionaire off of effort, just get up earlier? It's like, bro, it's no, it's, it's nothing to think about. Like, let's go. So for me, it's the opposite. So I think of it as I only have to get up earlier to be successful. Mm-hmm. I don't have to pay anybody to do anything. I don't have to take classes or anything like that. I just got to get up earlier and put forth more effort. Like, why wouldn't I do that? So to me, I, I think that's what I've seen in humans uh, is this, this will to want to do better, but not the will to do what they have to do to do better. Now, you mentioned that you're vegan and plant-based, and I'm also a vegan and plant-based. Uh, you know, I've been doing that for about five years now, and I live in Los Angeles. Oh, I live in Los Angeles. It's, easy. it's super easy out here, and it people here, everybody here is either, you know, thinking about it or doing it and stuff. And I still get pro- I still get looked at weird. They're like, you don't eat meat, all this kind of stuff. I can only imagine what you go through in Michigan. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's rough, bro. Yeah, it's rough. Do people it's like, rough. they're like, yeah. E.T., you you eat, this is the question, do you eat, you eat no meat at all, right? And like, how do you survive? No. Where do you get your protein? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I have to remind, I have to remind people that there are other uh, beings, animals, et cetera, who are surviving, some pretty thick, and they don't eat. Uh, the animals, you know, and they're doing quite well for themselves. You know, like an you know, elephant um, or a buffalo yeah, or a yeah, gorilla. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're doing pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Um, but no, it is it is a challenge in Michigan. Uh, I live in a small town, which is a challenge in, this, uh, in and of itself. You sure. Know, but maybe if I was in Detroit, it would be a little easier. But uh, I've, I've, I've been fortunate in that I've got a, uh, my cousin started a vegan uh, out of her house restaurant. Mm-hmm. And so she ships, uh, she drives stuff down to me. Uh, nice. And then when I'm on the road, what I try to do, she'll prepare. You know, the only bad thing about plant-based mm-hmm. is that when she prepares food for me, you know, it's a short, it's a short shelf life. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't last a week. So if I'm out of town for a week, she could probably get me going for about three days. And then you're you out. Know, but after that, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of rough. But, you know, what I said is, you know, th- this is the challenge for me. It's like, e, you got to find a way. And what I love, everybody knows I love Chipotle. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, that's my cheat. That's my cheat with the beans, you know, and rice and the fajitas, you know. Um, and, and, and sometimes I'll do the corn. But mm-hmm. um, I also love what I found is a great substitute. Uh, is the Mediterranean food? Mm-hmm. They, you know, I I I I do a nice Mediterranean. Or um, my wife's favorite is an Indian cuisine, mm-hmm. and they have a few dishes that we can do. So I mean, it's it's like anything else. If you if you if you want it, you know, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. You right. know. And right. so for me, it's just like, hey, I don't I don't have room for excuses at this point in my life. They don't pay bills. <laughs> Amen, man. Amen. Now, what do you what do you say to a person who tells you my dream my dream is too hard and it's just never going to happen? Et. I mean, you got to where you are, but I'm never going to make it to where I want to make. It. I'm never going to make that movie. I'm never going to write that script. I'm never going to paint that painting or, or or make that song. What do you tell these people? What would you say to them? Um, you know, unfortunately, I would say to them, "You're right." You know what I'm saying? You're, you're absolutely right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't debate you. You're absolutely right. I went to Detroit Henry Ford. Uh, and so one of the um, mantras in the hallway was, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. You mm-hmm. know? And that was a mantra we looked at every single day coming in and out of school. You know, so I would say to that person, if you don't think you can do it, you know what? You are absolutely right. You can't do it because you don't think you can. But at any moment, if you believe you can, then you'll find every resource. You'll find every human. You'll find every reason 
to make that thing happen. And, and here, here's what I find to be amusing is that my first goal, as I look back, my first goal was to get a GED. It was the craziest thing. Like that was my first big goal. It's like, yo, I got to get this GED and I got to get out of Detroit mm -hmm. and I got to follow my wife to college. Like I got to get out of here. I cannot let her leave me. And then after the GED, it was like, yo, E, you. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Whatever you say you want to do, just like you did the GED, it only requires that same thought process and that same energy. And what I mean by that, guys, my next goal is the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything more to get the Nobel Prize than I had to do to get the GED. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without, without question, man, without question. Now, can you also add, talk a little bit, because I've run into this all the time with people I talk to in the tribe and, and when I talk out in public and stuff. I, and, I, and this was a problem I struggled with for, for over Alex, a decade, right? almost two. Can you talk a little about how people get in their own way? and how they can get those obstacles that they're putting in their own way out of their way so they can reach their potential. Yeah, so I think what happens is, and this is weird, but it's kind of like simultaneously. When people come up with their dreams and goals, they immediately, and I don't know why they do this, but they immediately talk out the obstacles and challenges to keep them from making those dreams and goals become a reality. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the weirdest thing. It's like, as soon as they say, okay, I want to go to college, they immediately say, well, I don't have the money to go to college or college is hard. You know, it was funny. I told somebody recently or in recent meeting, like a year or so ago when my daughter was deciding, or which she's a sophomore now, she was deciding which uni uh, university she wanted to go to. It was a um, San Diego State University was one. Michigan State University was two. Mm -hmm. And I was telling everybody, if she goes to San Diego State, we're moving to San Diego. Mm -hmm. And it was the weirdest thing. As soon as I told him, Alex, that I was moving to San Diego, everybody <laughs> said to me, yo, E, you going to San Diego? It is the most expensive city in the United States of America. There is a sun tax. Like, bruh, <laughs> you can't afford to. And, and, and I said, whoa, last time I checked, there's people in San Diego on welfare. All right. Last time I checked, there are homeless people in San Diego. Yeah. You know, last time I checked, last time I checked, San Diego wasn't populated by only billionaires and millionaires the last time I checked. Right. It's people who are in the working class who live in San Diego. Mm -hmm. so, it, so it must not be that difficult to live in San Diego because there are other human beings who look like me who live in San Diego. They bleed. They, they have a mom and a dad. They the mortgage. got cousins. Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. It's like, come on, are you kidding me? San Diego is, do you, do you know that San Diego would go under if people didn't buy a house, if they didn't buy food? <laughs> like San Diego needs people to move there too. Sure. You know, so for me, I think the biggest challenge is that as soon as a person says that this is what I want to do, I think it's probably the ratio is probably sick because they mm -hmm. have one dream and they come up with 10 or 20 negative things that, that, that will stop them, impede them from making that dream become a reality. And so I'm just the opposite, man. As soon as I say I can do something, I only think of all the possibilities. I only think of all the great scenarios that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? I only think of how quick this thing is going to happen, how soon it's going to take place. And it was funny, uh, Carl, who's our videographer, we were talking the other day, and they 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 come from uh, Barbados, so they they came as students. So there was a time where they weren't considered citizens of you know the U.S. Uh, and so the wife, especially, uh, she was very limited in her travels. Mm -hmm. And so we were just talking the other day because we've been a lot of different places. And so I was like, Yo, Tamisha, before we go to Hawaii, have you been to Vegas? Like you talking about going to Hawaii? You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. we can go to Vegas first and then hit Hawaii. And she was <laughs> right. like, You know what? I've never been to Vegas before. I was like, you've never been to Vegas? This conversation was about maybe a week and a half ago. Uh, she said, no, I've never been to Vegas before. I was like, oh, okay, good. We're going to Vegas. And she's like, what do you mean by that? I was like, don't worry about it. We're going to Vegas. I promise you, not a week later, my agent called me and said, hey, you got a gig in Jimmy for Jimmy John's 
uh, and the convention is in Vegas. <laughs> and I'm saying, I told her, I was like, yo, we going to Vegas. You know, I've got a great friend there, you know, who sets up, uh, you know, he, he, he does bookings for celebrities and, you know, gets their accommodations for them. I said, I gave him a call. He gave me some great rates. You know, it, you got a elliptical and a treadmill in your room. You know what I'm saying? You got the Grand Lux and Cheesecake Factory all in one bit under one roof. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going, she was like, what? I was like, she's like, what? I mean, what do you mean? What? She was like, yo, we just had this conversation. I said, yeah. And, and, and immediately after we had the conversation, I put in my mind and in my spirit, we're going to Vegas. And so I got you to Vegas when you didn't even believe you could go to Vegas. So what could you do for yourself if you believed? You know, so I think that's the problem. We have a dream. We have a goal. Then we come up with a million reasons of why the thing we thought of can't possibly happen to us. And I, I don't do that. Now I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to be the devil's advocate here. I completely yeah. 110% believe what you're saying. But for the cuz I know there's someone listening right now saying that's all like positive thinking and all this kind of stuff, man. You know, you're not being realistic about your goals. Like if you're going to go after a goal, there are going to be obstacles. Why shouldn't I think about them and prepare for them? I'm just throwing I'm just being devil's advocate. So what do you say to that guy? You know, I say you only have so much energy, right? <laughs> so if you're telling me negativity is going to happen anyway, don't, don't worry about that day. You already got, like, you, you, you already know that's a reality. So let's leave that alone. Sure. Let's put all of our energy on making this dream become a reality. And that's my thing. You can't yeah. go in two directions. You just can't do it. You can't drive north and south at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to drive north. And if something happens that pulls me back south, it is what it is. We'll prepare for that when we get to that. But what I'm going to prepare for is the greatest scenario ever. So mm -hmm. when my wife was diagnosed with MS, I didn't say, and I heard the doctor say it. The doctor said, you know, hey, um, you know, individuals who have this lose their sight. Um, they can end up in a wheelchair. Sure. Um, this could be a depend. She gave me a, I promise you, she gave me about six or seven um, debilitating things that could happen to my wife. Listen to me, Alex, at no point did I embrace any of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm thinking it could be a reality. My wife could go, without, she could go blind. I'm not going to prepare for that, though. When that comes, I guarantee you I can work that out. What I'm going to prepare for, we're going to look at every possible scenario. You retiring, right? Because that's going to lower the stress. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get rest. I'm going to take you um, in, the, in the winters. I'm going to get you out of Michigan. We're going to travel to the south. We're going to travel to the west coast. We're going to get you some vitamin D. Yo, I bought her a happy light the other day. I got the happy light, you know, that's <laughs> supposed to provide, you know, these, these, these vitamin D sunray. You know, I, I, I went and found somebody that does supplements that are not the cheap stuff, sure. you know, that's diluted. I got the best of the best. You know, look, we went vegan for the most part. I say five, six days out of the week, we're vegan. You know, we might do vegetarian, which is the Mediterranean and the Indian. And when people say, what do you mean by that? Like sometimes Jeez. I realize the Indian things that they put like, it seems like they might put like cream or something in their spinach because it's, it's a little mushy, you know, sure. but, but, but we've not done meat. You know, I've, I've really pulled her back on some of the sugars and sweets, you know, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, she doesn't like to exercise. So I take her to the mall every day and she can at least get walking in, you know, as she's in the mall. So that's just, this is all I thought about. It's all mm -hmm. a positive. So have we had, has she had relapse? Absolutely. She's had a relapse or two. So we just stay in the bed that day. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Has she mm -hmm. had pain in her leg once or twice? Absolutely. But I prepared to cruise. I prepared to trip to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I prepared a trip to LA. Like these are the things that I did and, and she's not gone blind yet. She's not in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, you know, Ken will tell you, Carl will tell you, she's like, she's outruns us in terms of getting up early, staying up late. You know, so my thing is, yes, negative happens. We know that. You know, that's why we go to work. That's why we get insurance. I let my insurance take care of all the negative stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I, I file a claim. You know what I'm saying? That, right. that's, what they, that's their job. <laughs> that's not my job. I pay them. And when, a, when something happens, I file a claim. They take care of it. But in terms of uh, even as we're speaking right now, mm -hmm. you know, I went to Lowe's. My wife found uh, some, um, I guess, wood and she's doing a whole house over again. I know that brings her happiness. Sure. You know, and I know happiness is the thing that it will, will counterattack 
MS because the one thing, the only thing that they know for certain about MS is that it's triggered by stress. So my thing sure. is, let's try to get as much stress as we can out of her life, you know, and 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 whatever happens, we'll fend for it when it comes. So that that's just my philosophy. And if you say ET is just too positive, well, go on YouTube and look at who's the number one motivational speaker in the world based on social media. You, mm-hmm. you know, look who went from being a high school dropout to a PhD. You know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. You, you, it's, it must you, be you, you must be doing something too, right. You must be doing something yeah, right. Yeah, you say <laughs> I'm too positive, but I look at the results. Hey, man, you know what, man? That's the be- that's always the best answer for anything is the results. Like you don't believe me, that's yeah. fine, but these are the results. You know, and and without question, man. Now a lot of a lot of tribe members of, of the indie film hustle tribe, they're writing their screenplays and they're shooting their short films and they're doing their things on a side hustle. What do you suggest they do to try to make it a full time thing, man? To to try to to construct or create a blueprint where they can be doing their dream in a responsible way, full time. This is what I tell skeptics, mm-hmm. right? So for all you all your guys in your tribe, you're talking about who um, you know want to do a movie, but you know, they kind of pitter patter and they got their full time job. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the safest answer, guys. This is not. If it was ET, I'd just tell you to jump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. You're not <laughs> ET. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? You're not ET. So, right, right. so, so th- this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you to find somebody else who jumped before you. All right? And if you are a skeptic, find three or four people who jumped before you. So you got people like Tyler Perry, mm-hmm. you know, uh, people like Oprah Winfrey who started her own network. You know, I, what I want you to do is study four or five people. And don't just study them. This is the problem I have, Alex, with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I'm, why, why are you studying people if you're not going to eventually jump? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is it? Are, are you looking for a reason not to jump? Is that why you're studying them? Because if that's why you're studying them, don't study them because you're not going to jump anyway. So my thing is having your mind that you're going to jump. But because you're not ET and you are a little afraid, I want you to look at how they jump. So study about three or four people. Look at how they jumped. And then as you see how they jump, jump. So, so look at, okay, how many years did they work before they did it? You know, um, uh, what were they doing as a side hustle? How many hours were they putting in? You know, uh, like how much editing and whatever. H- how did they find stars? Because you look at Tyler Perry, it's like, yo, how did he find these stars? Because to me, Tyler Perry actually has done it backwards. When you look at the stuff that he has on Oprah Winfrey's network, those are B actors, but he blew up using... A actors mm-hmm. who maybe just weren't getting any time. Mm-hmm. You know, they hadn't necessarily been on a camera in a while, but in terms of their skill set, no. they were once known as A actors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm saying, yo, go study them. So if you're Eric Thomas, you're studying Zig Ziglar. You're studying oh, yeah. um, uh, Nightingale. You're studying Jim Rohn. You're mm-hmm. studying Tony Pol- Robbins. Tom- you're studying Napoleon Les Hill. Brown. Yeah. Napoleon Hill. Like you're studying these dudes and then you're watching what they're doing, not to just watch what they're doing, to mimic it at some point. Now, mm-hmm. of course, you're going to put your own flavor to it. Mm-hmm. But all the guys I mentioned, I, I, you know, you watch what they do and then you do it. So my thing would be to people who don't jump, make up in your mind that at some point you're going to jump, that you're not going to be studying for the rest of your life. You're not going to be hoping and wishing. And, you know, when we were kids coming up, my cousins, the girls used to double Dutch, you know. And so in double Dutch, yes, there is a, um, a period of studying, you know, of swaying back and forth, of being very intentional and deliberate, you know, before you jump in the rope. But that didn't last for an hour. It didn't mm-hmm. last for 30 minutes. Right. You know, it, last, it, it lasted enough time for you to com- comfortably feel that you could successfully get inside that rope and begin to jump. So I'm going to say to you, stop watching the rope. And if you're not, if you're going to watch the ropes, you, you, there's no profession in watching a rope. So just quit it. But if you're going to be a filmmaker, if you're going to be Lucas one day, you know, if you're going to be able to make an impact, Spielberg, if you're going to make an impact, 
If you wait until you 60, 70 years old, it'll never happen. So to me, if you're in your 20s, you jump before you start getting too many responsibilities mm -hmm. that, that stop you from jumping. If you're in your 30s, you better hurry up and jump before you have kids, you know what I'm saying, before you have a, a, a mortgage. Like, mm -hmm. just jump. But if you're scared to jump, study those who've jumped before you and watch how they jump, and you better jump like they jump, or you'll be one of those dudes that will be looking for the rest of your natural life, saying, I could have, I would have, I should have. And for me, I just think that's a sick place. I want to die knowing I did it. I made it happen. Absolutely, absolutely. And not be that bitter guy in the corner or on the sideline. Mm -hmm. You know you know those guys. You know those guys. They're just the bitter people who just like, oh, you know, well, they did this or they did this. I, I could have done it. Well, you didn't. <laughs> Straight up, you should have, but you didn't. Yeah, not only did you, yeah, you didn't, you didn't do it, and now you are telling other people they can't do it. Right. You and, know, and, and I definitely don't want to be that old man. Absolutely, man. Now, can you also talk about the importance of challenging yourself and stepping out of your comfort zone? Because I feel so many people, you know, they have their little box that they feel comfortable and they just don't want to step out of it. What do you what do you say? Yeah, so so to me, that's why I say the Nobel Prize. Yeah, that's a pretty I'm big box. Honest, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, a, right. that's a, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't even know if I could do that. Sure. You know, and, and here's the reality. It wouldn't even bother me if I never got it. Right. But what, but what would bother me is I, if I never pursued it. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened with the Nobel Prize, the Nobel Prize was me watching other people jump. Mm -hmm. And I like I liked the way they jumped. I've never, look. Spielberg, Lucas, King. I only know those names, guys, because they're so big, mm -hmm. right? Like, th those, those are big boys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I grew up watching Star Wars. I'm not really a, um, I'm not really a uh, what do you call it, scary movie dude. Right, but we, right. know, we know King, though. You got to know King, right? Stephen Spielberg, King, sure. was it, was it uh, UFO? Uh, yeah, Close Encounters of Third Time. He also made yeah, a little movie called E.T. Yeah, <laughs> E.T. Yeah, e. I, I knew that movie when I was a kid. Spielberg. You know what I'm saying? Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Sure. I remember that. You know, these are the big boys. You know, yeah. and so, but but watch this. I never watched King do his thing and say, I want to do that. But when I saw Martin Luther King, I said, I want to do that. When I saw Gandhi, I said, I want to do that. When I saw Mother Teresa, I said, I want to do that. When I saw Nelson Mandela, I said, I want to do that. And I looked at them, and what was the commonality? The Nobel Prize. You know, and I asked myself, how did these people win a Nobel Prize? They disrupted something in the world, you know? They looked at something and said, this isn't right. You know, this isn't right. And we got to stand up. And I've been that kid since I was, you know, maybe five or six, who when I saw somebody fight, I wanted to do something about it. I, I couldn't just drive past and didn't and, and act like I didn't see it. I've always wanted to do something. So it was a Nobel Prize when I said I want to do it. Somebody came to me and said, do you know what you have to do to win a Nobel Prize? I was like, not exactly. They said, here's a book. This is a book on Nobel Prize winners. The first thing you have to do is find a, an area that you can disrupt something. And I was like, oh, I know that. I've been disrupting in school since I was a kid. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got it. It's a school. Right. We'll disrupt the school system, you know? Um, and we'll make school fun again, you know? And we'll, 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 make the, we'll connect the dots for kids on why they need to be here Monday through Friday. You know, so I, I, I would say that this Nobel Prize and their goals or their dreams that are bigger than them, what it's going to do is it's going to give you a reason to wake up when you look at all the stuff that's going on in this world and sometimes you don't want to get up, mm -hmm. you know, or when you're going through your personal stuff and you want, let me tell you something, I meet those kids Monday, Wednesday, Friday when I'm not busy and, and let me tell you something, if I'm not doing anything, I'm up Monday, Wednesday, Friday greeting these kids, I, I got to get up to greet them even when I got a slight headache. Or when I had a bad night the night before, or when the sales weren't what this actually gets me up. And then when I'm with these kids, it brings a smile to my face. So whatever I was going through, I can't go through it no more because I'm with these every Tuesday. I'm at Michigan State doing my thing, giving them this message and it's on Facebook Live. And I, I don't care if I got an attitude when I get there, if I had a, some bad news, it's over once I get there and speak. So I'm saying to you that 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 the goal is going to give you life. 
that the goal is going to give you purpose, that the goal is going to drive you in a way that you never, ever, ever, ever thought that you could be driven. So your life, your the blood, the DNA, like every every fiber in you is counting on you setting goals that you thought you couldn't do because those goals will be responsible for pushing you and driving you in a way that being comfortable could never drive you. And and also you're enjoying the journey towards the goal and oh, not that's the such it. such yeah. uh, an important part of that is enjoying the journey. Because it's such a – people always – a lot of people just like are miserable trying to get to their goal. And when they get to their goal, they have nowhere else to go. So you yeah. got to – do you agree? You got to enjoy that journey. Enjoy that grind. And, yes. And, 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 and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. And I think what the, what the, what the, the, the kind of goals you're talking about, it takes you from checkers to chess. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Yep. You know, ch- chess is all, you know, chess is not really about checkmate. You know, chess, chess is about your personal development, like your personal strategy and, and thinking five, six, seven steps ahead. Whereas checkers, man, it's just like bop, 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 bop. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, it's like the, the current move. Whereas in chess, like you're sitting there before you make a move. So I'm saying for those of you who don't have dreams and goals that are bigger than you, you're playing checkers. You know, and so that's a that's a small span of life. You start playing chess. You're starting to plan now for your baby, for your grandbaby, for the next door neighbor, for the city, for the state, for the world. Like the stuff we're doing right now, man. Let me tell you something. People will be listening to these podcasts forever. Mm-hmm. You know, people will be drawn from us forever, and it won't just benefit the people that we're close to. It's benefiting people like you are giving people hope in the film industry. And you're giving them strategies and tips that if they didn't have, they they wouldn't get to their dream at a, ever, maybe. And some of them wouldn't get there this quick. So the stuff that we're doing is legacy stuff. I just don't think you could do that if you're just settled, if you're just average, if you're just common. Mm-hmm. I think having big goals is what makes you legendary. Mm-hmm. Amen, my friend. <laughs> Amen. Now, can we talk a little bit about beast mode? I love. Are they ready for this? I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't know if they're ready or not, brother. But yeah, this is some plant based stuff. This is some plant. <laughs> this is some organic plant. This is no. This is not McDonald's. This is not this In and Out. McDonald's. This is not In and Out. Yeah. Uh, this is some plant based stuff right here. The reason why is, man, because you are a inspirational quote machine. Uh, yeah. I've quoted you many times on my podcast. Uh, and beast mode, and wanting to be the lion. And all that stuff. Can we talk a little bit about beast mode and get a little bit of fire in these guys' butt today? Yeah, man. Be- be- beast mode, man, is about s- survival. Mm-hmm. You know, beast mode is understanding that at any mo- moment you could lose your life because of your ignorance. You know, that's what beast mode is about. Beast mode is not about not settling, not getting comfortable. Beast mode is knowing that you know the economy could ex- change tomorrow. And you need to be prepared for it. You know, uh, beast mode is like this constant idea of staying ready. Like, like, yo, it's me trying to eat and there are other people out here trying to eat, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and we, we're not in the safari. You know, I think that's where a lot of people live, Alex, in the safari. Mm-hmm. The safari is cr- cute. The safari is where it's like a man-made jungle, right? You know, where, <laughs> Controlled. where um, they have everything contained. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's not really real. The Serengeti, you could lose your life. <laughs> and the Serengeti, you wake up and you could be distinct. And, and, I, and I, I had a picture. People were like, yo, E, you was all on the lion thing. What's that? I'm like, I'm on hyena now. I'm on the hyena now. <laughs> Once the world got to a place where they were like lion mode, beast mode, I said, no, no, no. Don't make beast mode a lion. Don't do that. That's not beast mode. That, that was the example that I gave you in 2016 and 2015. The, the example of beast mode now is the hyena that has the lion in his mouth. And, mm-hmm. and, and the reason why I'm going with hyena now is that most of my tribe are hyenas. They're not lions. They weren't birthed as king of the jungle. You know, they didn't have this space carved out for them. Most of them are these little, small, spotted, ugly animals that came <laughs> in without, you know, any pub. They didn't come in with any recognition. 
But they, Alex, they didn't get the memo that the lion was the king of the jungle and that he couldn't be beat. They didn't, they didn't get that memo, right. you know? And, and, and I like what you said, your tribe, because hyenas run in tribes, like bigger than lions. And, 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 yeah. and, and, and when you look at the lion, the lion doesn't always go out and hunt. Like my man kind of gets up when things get out of control. The hyena, they all hunt every last one of them together. You know, and so sometimes you'll see a lion kill uh, a prey and then the hyena will come and say, OK, that's good. Thank you for killing it. Move out the way. That's ours now. And so some of us are hyenas, man. I didn't grow up with my father. My mother was 17 when she got pregnant with me. She got kicked out the house. My mom didn't go to college, you know, so I'm, I'm scrapping. But I'm out in this, in this Serengeti saying what's mine is mine. I don't want Alex stuff. I'm not going after Alex stuff. I'm not pursuing your stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's some stuff out here for ET in the motivational realm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going after Bob Proctor. I'm not going after Les Brown. I'm not going after Tony Robbins. Like we all in the same field mm -hmm. and I got to I got to go out here and get mine, but I'm not competing against other I'm competing against the best Eric Thomas. I'm going after my stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going after you know but what I'm doing is I'm going after it every day. I'm going at it intentionally and deliberately. I'm not waiting for it to come to me. I'm not waiting for an animal. I'm like, I'm not setting traps and waiting for animals to get in that trap. No, I'm going after it. And so that's what this beast mode is about, is what do you want? What do you need? What are you willing to go get? Stop stop waiting for stuff. Stop being reactive. Stop, 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 stop hoping and wishing and go after it. And I want to recommend to you guys a book, the QBQ. Um, and the reason why I want to recommend that is because I got to a point in my life where I realized beast mode also meant taking full responsibility. I can't say Carl didn't do the presentation and so I wasn't able to speak and then now my family can't eat because Carl didn't show up. Bro, I'm not <laughs> on that. I would love the presentation. I would love to have the presentation, but my family got to eat, man. And I can't put my family's life in somebody else's hand. Now, I respect Carl's gift and I wouldn't be here without him. But at the same time, if there are ever no videos and I got to hit these cities and I got to hit these schools and hit these prisons and I got to find a way to make myself viral without videos. And that's what I was doing before I met Carl. And that's probably how we ended up meeting. I was beast mode in my area. Mm -hmm. And so he took the beast mode to a whole other level. But I didn't wait for social media to start doing what I'm doing right now. I, I started doing this in 1989. And social media caught up with me. <laughs> I didn't wait for I didn't wait for YouTube and Instagram. I have been doing this for years yep. before YouTube came out. You know, and so that's what Beast Mode is about: being intentional and deliberate about your life, making no excuses, and doing everything you have to do to eat and make sure your family eat, your friends eat, like whoever's important to you, making sure that you wake up every day and you go get it. Man, can you can you discuss? Um, if you can, the why of why people do what they do as far as try and go after goals. Because a lot of times people set goals and they don't even know why they're setting them. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, let me tell you this, guys. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think you should ever start a goal without having that, without making sure you got fuel. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. you don't want, I've never gotten in my car. I'm not a mechanic. Mm -hmm. no, but I've never got in my car without looking at the gas meter. Like I'm looking at, that's the first thing I'm looking at. That's right? the first thing. When I get in that car and I crank that sucker up, I'm not looking at how much oil. I'm, I, I admit the last time the car got, the oil got changed, they did ask me, uh, when was the last time you changed this oil? I'm, I'm like, bro, I'm not 100% sure. You don't put the right sticker up there and the right yep. date. Yep. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm messed up. I'm just going to be honest with you. But gas, I check the gas every time I get in the car. And so what I would say to people is there are many people who start ventures without looking at see if it's enough fuel to push that boy. You need mm. fuel to push a Mercedes Benz. You need fuel to push a, a Lamborghini. You need fuel to push a Maserati, a Telsa, whatever it is. You need fuel for that. You know what I'm saying? Either electricity or get you need fuel. And so I tell people, don't start something without fuel, because at some point life is going to happen. But if you got the right fuel. Let me give you guys, let me paint a vivid picture for you. Mm -hmm. I've said this, I've said this in many conferences that we have seen women who are five, five, frail women. You know, they like to run in the morning. They weigh about 98 pounds wet. They've mm -hmm. got these beautiful little um, uh, running 
uh, strollers with their babies and they're mm -hmm. out doing their thing and a dog comes out of nowhere. A dog comes out of nowhere and I always ask, what do you think is going to happen? Seven month old baby in this um, stroller and mom is running and this dog comes out of nowhere. What do you, what do you think is going to happen? They said, you know, what, what's not going to happen is the mom is not going to let the stroller go and run home and leave the seven month baby there to the mm -hmm. dog. What's going to happen nine out of 10 and I love it because as ferocious as some dogs are, because of how they were trained, they still <clears throat> sense fear. Even the dog understands like, whoa, she's not playing. <laughs> and we have, we, we, we have record of mothers getting dogs off their children or mothers lifting boulders or cars. Sure. Or mothers getting their kids out of dangerous situations, going up against gang bangers. But you get that same mother... I'm sorry, that same woman who's not a mother, she's just running up the street on her own and the same dog comes out, she's going to run. Uh, What's the difference? Same situation. No, 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 it's not the same situation. That first one, she was fueled by something. And so most of us, what we do wrong is we go after activities without being fueled. So before I start any major task, I ask myself, yo, E, why are you doing this? What's the real reason why you're doing this? Do you have enough fuel to do this, E? And when I think about my son, I was like, yep, I'm going to get my uh, master's degree and my PhD. Why? My father's a dropout and my grandfather dropped out, so it made it easy for me to drop out. Because when I dropped out, nobody could call me and say anything to me. Why? Because my father and my grandfather didn't finish. So there was, there was no expectations. There was no real goal set for me. My, my grandma couldn't call and say, you need to finish school. Her husband didn't. Her son didn't. So she couldn't say anything to me. I said, E, I need you to get a master's and a PhD so your son at least finishes high school, at least finish college. And because I went to Michigan State University and walked across that stage twice, mm -hmm. my son walked across that stage, same stage. When he was in high school, they used that stadium. And then he walked across the Michigan State stage with his four-year degree in four years. It took me 12 years. He did it in four years. Now his sister's a sophomore and she's trying to finish in three years at Michigan State University. The fuel I needed when I didn't feel like going to school was, if you quit, you're going to make it easier for him to quit. If you keep going, you're going to teach him what keep going looks like. So you cannot stop. And I tell you, man, I had got to a point where I wanted to stop the PhD. And I remember kids asking me when I would travel, Mr. Thomas, you get your ET, you get your PhD yet? And I was like, nope. You get your PhD yet? Nope. And I remember saying to myself, yo, E, if you stop, what are you going to tell these kids when they ask you, why would you quit? And then if you quit and they're watching your videos, you know how easy it is for a kid in Chicago without his dad who's in prison and his mom had him at 15? You know how easy it's going to be for him to quit? You know how mm -hmm. easy it's going to be for him to give up? So E, do not quit. You keep going for these kids. And so you must have fuel in your tank. You must have fuel in your, in, in, in your engine. You must have fuel to keep yourself going. So don't ever start a vision without a why. We can get to the how later. Mm -hmm. I think if you got the right why, you're going to find a way to make it happen. Man, that's amazing advice, brother. Amazing advice. Now, I got a few more questions that I ask all my yeah. guests. Um, first off, if you were going to talk to a filmmaker or screenwriter today and they want to break into the business, what's the one piece of advice you'd give them? So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm talking to a screenwriter wanting to break into the business, what I would tell him is, we need you desperately. Mm -hmm. like we need you desperately. We need you desperately. Let me tell you why we need you desperately. What if the filmmakers, Martin Luther King days, had not recorded the I Have a Dream speech? <laughs> I, don't care how, I don't care how good the speech was. <laughs> if you didn't record it, sure. if you didn't put it on film, we'd never have it. And think about the millions of people. When we went to space, somebody recorded it. What if it hadn't been recorded? Where would we be? Mm -hmm. If John F. Kennedy's great speech was not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. And more importantly, if Ken Nelson hadn't recorded the guru story for a project in school, the world may not necessarily know who Eric Thomas is, or my ministry may not be where it is today. So I would say to every filmmaker, every year, every month, Every week, every day you wait to do what you're doing, you stop something from being memorialized. 
I don't care how good I am. If it's not recorded, think about the millions of people who listen to that audio because he put a mic on me. Nobody had ever put a mic on me before like that. Nobody had ever captured that, captured me in the essence of that on film. And just think of how many, look, how many people have gotten through cancer. How many people have gotten back up and took that law exam again or that medical exam again? How many people have been blessed because of that one video? When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, mm -hmm. then you'll be successful. So I say to you, the, the, the talent is good, but if it's not recorded, then it never happened. We need you. Get busy. And I always tell them, you have no idea what your art can do for somebody in a moment yeah. in their life. You have no idea yeah. what a movie, a story, a song, a painting, art is so important in our, in our world. You, you Antoine Fisher. Antoine Fisher mm -hmm. made me, no one could get me to forgive my biological father for not being in my life. Nobody could get me past that pain and that hurt. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Antoine Fisher, the movie. Denzel movie. I got, yeah. in a, yeah, got in a fetal position on the side of my bed while me and my wife were watching it. And I started screaming and hollering. My wife said, what's wrong with you? I said, for the first time in my life, I'm being healed. I'm, I'm, you were hearing me release. When I released it, it began a relationship with my biological father after I was 30-something years old because of that movie. Mm -hmm. So I think what a lot of filmmakers do wrong is they see it as an art when it's not art. It can be classified as art, but it's life changing. Mm -hmm. Jump yeah. is what I would tell them. Jump, jump, jump. do it, do jump. it. Jump. <laughs> now, what, uh, what a book had the biggest impact on your life or career? I'd say um, two books. First, The Pilgrim's Progress. Mm -hmm. That was the first book I read. Uh, it changed my life. It was actually a book in school growing up that we had to read. I read it in college. And then um, Dennis Kimbrough and did a spinoff of Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And what he decided to do, the exact same book, pretty much the exact same framework, he just decided to use African-American um, heroes um, in that particular text that he did. But it, yeah. was, it was a spinoff of Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, so the exact same principles. And that was the book, I think, professionally that took my life to another level. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't read it since the beginning. I think the guru story um, that I did came from that book, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn in life? To unlearn what you've learned. <laughs> it's, to unlearn what you've learned. Because what you learn got you to where you are but it won't take you to where you want to go. So unlearning so many of the things that I learned in Detroit, you know, the stuff I learned in that mid, that, what do you call it? Automobile industry. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's a lot of things I learned that that's not befitting of an entrepreneur. You know, there's nothing wrong with Detroit, nothing wrong with the automotive industry. It had its time, um, but we see the conditions of Detroit based on people not forecasting. And believing right. that one industry would last forever, you know. And so I was fortunate that I, I let go of that mindset. But there was a lot of there are a lot of people that didn't. There's an entire city that didn't, and they're dealing with the repercussions of it. So unlearning many of the values that I held on to in, in my other life. I'm an entrepreneur now, and there are new things that I need to learn. Now, what are three of your favorite films of all time, sir? My favorite films of all time, three of them. Goodwill Hunting, yeah, okay. Goodwill Hunting, because not only was it a great film with a great um, storyline, mm -hmm. but I'm inspired that Matt Damon and Affleck is that his name? Yeah, Ben Affleck. Um, yeah, that these dudes were, you know, what I'm saying they jumped, man, they mm -hmm. jumped and did their own <laughs> film and used their own environment, a college environment, um, Shawshank Redemption. Yo. Shawshank Redemption. Mm. Shawshank Redemption, man. Yes. Just, On my top know, three, ability, too. Oh, his ability to use what he had to get what he want. And my all-time favorite. And, and people are going to laugh because they're like, E.T., it's a wonderful life. Of course. That's always that's, that's a yeah. popular one. That's a popular one on the podcast. 
<laughs> no question. No question. <laughs> now, Life changer. Now, where can people find you, E.T.? Um, they can find me if they want to be a part of the tribe, mm-hmm. need some motivation, need to be developed, you know, just in their own personal space. I tell people a lot of time you have a great gift and a great art, but you also need to develop as a human. And a lot of times we spend a lot of time just developing our art and not de- developing our mindset, you know, mm-hmm. and our character. And so Breathe University uh, is where they can go to be a part of that tribe and pick up some of those skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if it's just motivation that you're looking for, etinspires.com is all access ET. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. And of course, YouTube, uh, there's a few videos on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a couple. It's one. Thanks to, thanks to my guys who jumped. They're, yeah. they're a little bit over a thousand videos up there. So uh, I'm appreciative to them for that. And, and I can't tell the tribe, I can't, I can't promote and, and, and say that you've got to go see and, and watch Eric's work so much because honestly, it's like a cup, it's better than a cup of coffee in the morning. You watch five minutes of an ET video in the morning. Right before you start working, you will be inspired. And 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 when I need inspiration, I go to ET, man. So And I appreciate that. It means a lot, man. I ET. appreciate that. Somebody of your caliber, you know, who's listening to me consistently. That means a lot. I'm humble. Uh thank you. And and I'm humbled that you you came on the show and shared uh shared a bit of of uh knowledge bombs with our uh with our tribe, man. And I, I hope this episode will reach far and wide to all creatives and people who want to listen to it and get some inspiration and get some no good and get some good stuff out into the world, man. Cause God knows we need it now more than ever. Get some good art in the, right. get yeah. some more art yeah. in the world and, yeah. uh, and just more happiness, man, just more happiness. Yeah. So Eric, man, ET, yeah. thank you again. Thank so, you, so Alex. much for taking the time, yeah. brother. Man, I appreciate you, man. So how many of you guys are ready to go into beast mode? <laughs> get get 2018 started off right. I want to share with you a few quotes that I listen to. I, I read all the time, anytime I'm down by ET. What you envision in your mind, how you see yourself, and how you envision the world around you is a great importance because those things become your focus. When you want to succeed as badly as you want to breathe, then you will be successful. Sometimes it's not about being the most talented. Sometimes it's not about being the smartest. Sometimes it's not even about working the hardest. Sometimes it's all about consistency. And that's one big lesson I want you guys to take away from today is consistency. Just keep grinding. Keep pounding day in, day out. Write a page a day. Write two pages a day for your script. You want to learn how to ru- how to run a camera? Watch an hour a day of an online course. Read a book. Go out there and shoot your, you know, take an hour a day. Practice. Come back. Day in, day out. It will not happen overnight, but it will happen. You've got to go out and do it yourself. And I hate to tell you, but no one is going to hand you a goddamn thing in this business or in any other business for that matter. But in the film industry, Definitely no one's going to hand it to you. So you got to go out there and get what you're looking for. Go out there and make your own opportunities. Green light yourself. Don't wait around for permission from other people to make your movie, to write your script, to give you the opportunity that you want. In today's world, there is a technology available to you that you can go out and make your own opportunities. It's not 1985 anymore. It's 2018. Go out. Get your iPhone, make something. Go out, create a series, put it on YouTube, put it on Amazon. Go out there and shoot a micro-budget feature film. Hell, shoot two, three, four, five this year. Shoot a movie a month. Just do it. Doesn't matter if it's good or not. You got, you're just getting started. Just pound it. And I guarantee you, if you shot five feature films this year and you shoot them in two or three days each, they might suck, but I guarantee you, at the end of that, that, those five features, you're going to be a better director, a better filmmaker than you were at the beginning of the year by sitting around talking about not getting your – no, I don't have the opportunity. Hollywood's not calling. Well, I'm, I'm already too old. I'm 30. I, 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 I don't want to start cursing, so please with that 30 crap. Anyway, it's never too late. Just go out there 
and do it. And I hope this episode really gets you up off your ass because 2018 is going to be a great year and it's all in your hands. You have the power to change your own destiny. I was able to do it with Indie Film Hustle. I, I started it with nothing, with zero. And, it, it, and I can tell you by just being consistent and continuously learning and growing and, and, and applying new stuff to my craft all the time, I was able to do things that I would have never been able to do without just continuously pounding and grinding on a daily basis. So here's to you guys, to the tribe. I, I, I wish you nothing but amazing things in 2018. And, you know, get up off your ass. Do what you've got to do to make your dreams come true, guys. All right? Of course, if you want any links to anything we talked about in this episode, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 211, and I'll have links to all of E.T.'s stuff. He's got his books, uh, his videos. I'll have a bunch of his videos up there because, I, I I mean, they are better than, than coffee. They definitely will wake you up. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And, uh, you know, I love you guys so much, and I can't wait to share uh, all the stuff I got planned for 2018. Oh, and, of course, don't forget – uh, Sundance. Sundance is coming up as well. So I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff from Sundance uh, this year, more than I did last year. We're trying to take up our game up a notch. So if you guys are going to Sundance, anybody from the tribe going to Sundance, hit me up. I'd love to get together. We'll get a coffee. We'll hook up, talk for a bit. I just I love meeting tribe members and uh, and helping as much as I can, guys. So as a special little bonus, guys, I wanted to throw in a little bit of ET so you can get a real taste of how E.T. preaches. So I'm going to toss this on at the end of this episode. So enjoy it. And uh, as always, guys, keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. Everybody gets excited. E.T., the guru story, but nobody wants to get up at 3 o'clock. Everybody's excited when I say, I wake up at 3 o'clock, Eric's a beast, 3 o'clock. And then you try it twice at five. And you uh, <laughs> Like for real, you walk out of here pumped up, fired up. You get some new information. You're ready. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. And what you have to understand is everybody that you're going to hear from, Eric Thomas. My mother got pregnant with me at 17 years old. High school dropout. Eight out of trash cans. Lived in abandoned buildings, slept in cars, multi-million company that's changing the world. I didn't say America, the world. Why? Because not only do I want to be a beast, if you follow my 24 hours, I do what beasts do. And you cannot. Listen to me. I got you. You cannot. <laughs> like, I don't want them to feel like they were wrong. Nobody else didn't clap. You were absolutely right. That was a moment. They didn't catch the moment. You were right. She, whoever that was, they did what beasts do. All right? Watch this, though, guys. You can't, you can't just say you want it. You can't watch the video and say, I want it as bad as I want to breathe. It's cute to say it. But when it's showtime, when the sun comes up, when the sun comes up, you've got all the books, you've got all the tapes, you've got all the access. Now it's time to hunt. And what separates you from everybody else is that when it's time to hunt, you're ready to hunt. So you can get all the information. What's going to separate you is when it's beast time, when it's when it's war time, you got to get up and make it happen. You got to get up. So this morning, yep, yep, yep. I don't know how it happened, but once something this morning, we got we got an emotion. Yep. Different country. Yep. Still got the still got the exercise in. Still got the workout in. Yep. Still walked as a team for about an hour or something this morning. Yep. Everything. Yep. Different country. Nothing. Set. Yep. Still swimming pool. Yep. Did the whole nine. Yep. Still met this morning. Yep. Did the whole nine. Still made all the phone calls. Still answered all the tweets. Yep. 16 hour ride. Nothing changes. I'm here and I can say jet lag. I come up with a whole bunch of excuses. I had a call yesterday. It was nine o'clock in the morning back at the States. Every week I'm on. I made the adjustment. I went to bed at, I went to bed. I'm sorry. Help me, CJ, because I don't want to lie. What time did we go to bed last night? Nine ish. Yep. So I had to get up at 11 for the call. And with all, with everything I'm talking, you're talking about a 14 hour difference, not including a four, a five hour flight to L.A., then a 15, 16 hour flight to Melbourne. Listen to me very closely. I still made all my appointments. Why? Because that's what bees do. I didn't send out an email. I'm, I'm, I'm in Australia. 
Just had fish and chips, I apologize. I'm tired. Listen, I made all my engagements. I made all my appointments. I found out that I left a very important folder for this last part of the dissertation, the last chapter. I left it at home. I made a phone call. Told the young lady, I'll pay you extra. Go scan it for me. Send it to me. Got here. Everything is there. When I get back, I got work to do. I will not go back and go to sleep. Listen to me. Everybody wants to be a beast. Everybody's got lions on their profiles. Everybody talks positive about themselves. Everybody talks like you a beast. You dress like you a beast. You've got the cards like a beast. Your image, everything about you says, I'm a beast. That's how you present yourself. When you present, I'm a beast. But then when it's time to do what beasts do, you, you, you back up. You have an excuse. And I told you before, innovation is rewarded. They give you a plaque for it. They give you a reward for it. But execution is worshipped. When you start executing, listen to me. I want you to, and this is no disrespect, but I want you to look at your salary. And if you can look at your salary, your salary would either say rewards or your salary would say execution. No, this is no disrespect. When when we were talking about what we were going to do, we made a certain amount. When we did 90, 98, 99% of what we said we were going to do, we started getting phone calls and I'll get in trouble with CJ. So I can't say it. Let me tell you some of the top entertainers, some of the top companies in the world are calling us on a daily basis and we're declining and there's one company we're thinking about working with. Why? Because when people see us, they like they execute now and we want to be a part of the execution. So when you start execution, you go to a whole other level. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. Everybody, just say that with me. I want you to just start feeling that. All right, so let's start with the top. Everybody wants to be a beast? beast. Good. Together now. We're going to do it together. Together. All right. All right. All right. Ready. I'll count to three. That's what happened. I didn't count. So you didn't you didn't know when to start. Right. OK. So one, two, three. Good. One more time. One, two, three. Good. Everybody wants to be a beast. Right. Finally, until it's time to do what real beasts do. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, this is why there's no excuse. If I come back in three years and you're not where you want to be, I didn't say where Glenn wanted you to be. I didn't say where Eric wanted you to be. I want you to write down before you leave today where you want to be. Listen to me. There's no excuse because Glenn and the team are going to tell you every single thing you need to do. Every single thing. This is the problem. They're going to give you every single tool, every single resource. They're going to make themselves available. And what will separate those of you from the rest is not what they give you. What's going to separate you is what you do. That's what's going to separate you. All right, all right, all right. So, CJ, I'm going to go here and we're going to go to the slide. I got to go here. See, I got to go here. I got to go here. So we left. We I don't remember. We left Friday. We left Friday. So see, see, you know, she's younger than me. She's the president of the organization. And she's been paying attention not only to me, but his father and other people. And so CJ's like, Eric, we're going out of town. He just had a little baby. And so CJ sends me, he sends me a photo. He sends me a photo. He sends me a photo of, of 14 cards. If I'm not mistaken, was there 14 cards, CJ? 11 cards, because we're gone for 11 days. Smart young man. 11 cards, and I believe there was a Reese's kiss on each card. Hershey's kiss, thank you. Hershey's, not Reese's, Hershey's kiss. On each one, CJ? Good. And those those 11 cards represented a card every day for his wife while he was gone. For every single day, he got 11 cards, and he wrote something special to his wife for those 11 days, right? And I love it. And he sent me a picture, E.T., I'm a beast. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Right, really, he sent me a card. E.T. He had all of them laid out real cute. He took the pick by. Boom, forward it to me. E.T., what it do, baby? We out of here. I've listened to you. I've watched my father. I've taken notes. 11 cards, guys. What's up? I don't know about the other two guys and what their response were, but I pulled out my camera and also took a picture of the 11 cards and the five for my daughter. And some other trickets, boom, and sent it back. Boom, this is what real beasts do. <laughs> Are you not hearing what I'm saying? He said he left. I love it. I love it. I did the exact same thing. Every single day I'm gone, my wife has a car. She has a gift. My daughter, only five. I don't want my daughter to think she's her, her mom. <laughs> like, like, she's like, I'm a queen too. I'm like, no, two queens we are. <laughs> 
you're, you're, in, you're in training, okay? You're not there yet. You're in training, right? But before we left, she sent it out. E.T., I'm every day for my wife. Beast mode. I said, I see you. Boom. I'll raise you one. Beast mode. Yep, got you. We're leaving our wives for 11 days. This is what beasts do. That's what we do every day when my wife opens up a car. Different stuff. Same thing. This is what a beast does. I don't say I'm leaving. I'm, uh, so what does that mean? That means before we left, we had to buy the car. Before we left, we had to sit down and make sure that every day it was something different in the car. We had to forecast and say, well, what would I probably say if I was in Australia on the fifth day? What would I say on the seventh day? I'm probably going to eat fish and chips on the second day. So let me say something about fish and chips on the second day. Listen to me very closely. I want you to know you should be excited. All the information you're going to get, all the information you have, there's only one equation that's missing. There's only one thing you cannot purchase. There's only one thing you cannot buy. And that's real beat. What real beats do. That's something you're going to have to do. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.